system. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, we have a new subject one we haven't talked about yet. So I'm really, really excited to, uh, to share with you. How do you take all these force drawings that are super loose um, of ours and fluid and forceful and actually clean them up, right? It's a question that comes up uh, quite a bit. Uh, what drove me to bring this subject in this week is just that I have a good handful of um, students I'm mentoring right now that are working towards portfolios. And typically, you know, you want a cleaner line when you get to that stage. So, uh, so that's going to be, like I said, our primary focus today. Um, so before we get started, uh, let's say hello to Mertunje. How's it going? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, yeah, no, me too. I'm excited to, to get into this whole like cleanup thing, you know? Um, I want... Yeah, it is different. We're so used to like talking about line and power and how energy is moving around. And now, uh, now we're, you know, it's like, how do you do that and, and organize, right? And keep things clean when usually our job with you guys in mentorships and in premium and on the site is like, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up, <laughs> right? Like, relax, take it easy. And, uh, you know, how do we get to the other side? How do we come back the other side, right? Put people come in tight, you go through the loose machine of force, and now we're going to pop you out the other end and say, okay, it's okay to be clean. How do you do that, though, right? And like I said, I don't think we've talked about this yet in the last two years through all of these, uh, you know, this is what, not number 112 <coughs> when it comes to our force live sessions. I don't think we've discussed this at all, so... Um, I don't know if I've said this in the past, by the way, um, but Swanley will be returning. He's on vacation. Um, so no worries. It's not like Swanley disappeared. Uh, you'll see him in a couple of weeks. Uh, we look forward to his return and hopefully he's having a great time. Uh, so that's it. Uh, as usual, if you enjoy our Force Fridays, please hit the subscribe button. While you're here, if you like what's going on, please hit the like button. Uh, and last but not least, you know, hit the bell to get notified, right? And oh, also, you know, as I'm sure most of you know, I'm friends with, with Stan Prokopenko, it's uh, with Proko. And I believe the second half of my anatomy uh, video just came out on uh, Proko yesterday. So go check that out. Talks about, you know, watching out for um, asymmetry and, you know, how to use symmetry basically in anatomy across the body. And it's the second half of one uh, first video that came out about a month or so ago. So go check that out. Uh, I'm sure most of you know Proko by now. Um, so let's get to it, right? Uh, hey, Jasper, welcome. Good to, uh, good to see you uh, stop in. Valerie's here, Tim, Gerardo. A lot, of, uh, a lot of mentees here today. Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at Photoshop, right? So here's a loose drawing and a tight drawing. And this is what I want to share with you today. Like, how do you get from A to B, right? And how do we do this? So, you know, what we're going to discuss is what we have on the left is what we're typically teaching you, right? Like be able to stay rough and loose, you know, and draw a line over and over and over again and get to a cleanup, you know, and there's a lot of power to, to, to staying loose and building up, you know, and we've probably shared with you many times, you know, on the website, there's kind of two main uh, exercises that talk about line. They're skating the page, which looks something like, uh, like this, right? Uh, and so it's like one line that you're tracking. But the other one is uh, the roller coaster, and the roller coaster has a lot of, you know, like building up and building up, right? And you're like pushing into a curve and pushing into this curve, pushing. And I hear I should, I should really actually start it lighter, right? So here I am, and I start light, and I'm building it up and building it up and building up. So it's almost the antithesis of what we're going to show you today. Or is it, right? One thing I can share with you right here and right now is this is physical practice right um and practice gives you skill right a lot of drawing is muscle memory and let's not forget that no drawing happens until your hand starts to move <laughs> right so it's a physical act um and in order to um to get better at it you have to draw more so obviously there's the mental side that's telling your body and your hands what to do uh but you know, you really need to go through the physical act of doing it over and over and over again to learn the skill of how to control your hand, right? It's that, it's that obvious, right? You know, and, and I always bring up like, you know, hey, if there was, um, if there was a chart of let's say one to a thousand, and let's just say for argument's sake, it took 10,000, a thousand lines to get good at line. 
And uh, student A uh, draws, hey, let me draw two of these charts. Student A on average does 10 lines per drawing, right? So in one drawing, student A gets here. And student B, right, student B draws an average of 150 lines per drawing. Well, you know what, guess what? Who do you think is gonna get faster to the thousand lines into the mastery of getting better at line? It's probably more like 10,000 lines, by the way, versus a thousand. But um, put in the time, you know, put in the practice, put in the lines, right? And force is such an excellent uh, vehicle, is such an excellent drawing approach to getting line practice, right? Because not only getting line practice, it actually helps you feel force. Again, you're really trying to understand uh, how applied force is pushing, you know, into these curves, right? So uh, put in the line. Don't feel like you've got to be clean up front. Again, that's typically how people come to us and we're trying to like loosen you up, right? Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to bring up today. So I do have a secret. Um, I did go to the military of clean line drawing, <laughs> right? So what does that mean? I did actually go to the military for clean line drawing with a, a system that had a lot of hierarchy at it, um, in it. I was terrible at clean line, by the way. It took me a lot of practice and perseverance and work. And I had mentors to help me figure that out. And where did I go? I actually learned all of this at Disney Animation, you know? Um, so as most of you probably know, I worked on Lion King in the early uh, 90s, 92 to 93. Um, and that's where I learned how to start being clearer with my work. And that, that clarity led to the cleanliness. And it was not easy. Now, you know, at animation, at Disney Animation, typically what would happen is you would get, um, you would get a, a piece of paper that, you know, an animation piece of paper, right? Here's the, um, the holes, the pegs. Uh, and you'd have a, a sketch on it that they would give you, like, hey, it's Simba, right? It's like, here he is, his tail, here's his head and ears, right? You'd get this drawing and you would also get underneath this is how much paper you had, right? You would also get over here, these two drawings, there's two of them here. You would get, this one would be a rough and this would be a cleanup of uh, the drawing, let's say prior, right? So let's just call this one. And then you get another two drawings, right? One, two over here. I'm gonna, for some drawings are usually done on twos for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna get rid of that for a moment and say that this is drawing number three, okay? So drawing number three also had a rough and a cleanup. And then you stuck your sheet of paper on top, right? And actually, here, let me get rid of this. Actually, most of the, sometimes you'd get this rough, most of the time actually you wouldn't get this. You'd have your clean piece of paper, you'd put it on top of this. You could flip the roughs or the cleanups that were given to you and you had to find the in-between. So usually you would, you would flip them just to see how the rough got like translated into the cleanup. Normally I would take the roughs finally out, look at the cleanups, right? So now all of a sudden you just have a cleanup and you have a cleanup. Right, and then you have your rough on top. And the way they wanted you to work was you would take um, a colored pencil, right? Like typically a blue or red pencil. And you would start to semi roughly, not entirely clean. You would put in your drawing, right? Like so, all right, so here's like Simba, right? You would put Simba there. And then you were supposed to uh, rub this down, right? With a kneaded eraser, you would rub it down you know, and you're flipping like crazy, right? To see if this works. And then after that, right? Then you're supposed to clean it up, right? So you rub it down so it's barely showing up, it's faint. And then you had to go in there and go, okay, this to this, to this, to this, to this, to this, right? And you do like your, you know, your cleanup drawing, right? So long story short, what I'm, I'm going to reveal here is we were on a schedule, believe it or not, right? Like, and I was online during crunch time we had to create one drawing per hour, okay? That was our schedule. And myself and one of my friends, a guy named Russ, we both were like, there is no way we're gonna be able to create these two phases in one hour, meaning this like rough color pencil phase and then the finished graphite phase, which is kind of like the inking phase. So there were times where we were just like, you know what, the heck with the, um, with the blue line, right? We would just go straight to black. So you would flip like crazy and go, yeah, you know, like there's the head, here's the ear, here's the other ear. 
So that was the gauntlet that I personally had to go through and the pressure that we were under of getting a production level quality drawing on Lion King done at one hour at a time. Sounds like a lot of time. I got to say, when I think about that now, I'm like, wow, an hour is a really long time to get a drawing done. But not really, you know, not when every shape in the character's face has to be correct. I remember eyes were really, really challenging for me because, you know, you're dealing with like the ellipse of the eye and you're also dealing with the ellipse of the pupil and then the iris and like how that gets in between to, you know, this eye like slightly looking to the right, like just getting those curves correct. Plus, don't forget that each of these, um, each of the lions had whiskers, right? So every one of the whiskers, there's typically like three or four per side. I don't remember it now anymore, but there's, this is a negative space, right? The negative space in between each one of these lines um, is a shape, right? And not only is it a shape, but you have to watch the length of the whisker, right? So how long is each whisker? And what is the shape and how is that shape getting wider or narrower from one key to another, right? As you draw the in, in between, which is let's say drawing number two. So yours is always on top and you're flipping and you go from one, two to three, right? So you go from the back, you know, you go from here to here, back down to here, right? And that's how you basically flip the paper, right? Anyway, so that's where I learned how to do cleanup. And what I've done over the years in teaching force drawing is um, I've tried to systemize it. I like creating systems, that's why I, I like teaching. Um, and I'm going to share with you those tricks today, like everything that I could think of is to like, this is how I control cleanup and how to get to cleanup. If you have anything to add today, by the way, on how you per, um, perhaps clean up, feel free, you know, feel free to throw it into chat. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Any questions on Lion King and in-betweening and clean line? If you have any questions, please put it into the, um, into the chat, right? Hopefully you'll be learning cleanup without the pressure of <laughs> having to get a production level drawing done in an hour. All right, so that's Lion King and Disney. Oh, I brought in, uh, for the fun of it, I brought in some of my drawings. So these are Xeroxes that I later scanned that were drawings that I had done in the film. Um, I was originally put onto the young Nala unit. So this is young Nala up here in the top right. Uh, and there's a guy named Mario Menjivar, um, who ironically was an SVA graduate as well as me. And he was one of the guys I would report to at the beginning. And he really taught me actually the, the art of like cleanup itself. Uh, and he just was a great teacher, great draftsman himself. Um, and then I bounced around the film, you know, cause we were in, in crunch time, you know, you can see, I worked on the hyenas and I worked on Simba. I worked on adult Simba as well. I worked on the love scene between him and Nala. I also happened to work on the scene where he says to Scar, uh, so they can hear you, you know, when Scar tells him like, hey, I killed Mufasa. So I got very lucky. I actually worked on some pretty big, um, pretty big scenes in the movies. I noticed in this one, by the way, um, I wrote notes here down as to how I had to like try to think about this. I just want you to see how maniacal all of this is when you were in 2D animation. You can see here the bunches of hair are broken down into groupings, right? So it's like, hey, there's this group, there's this group, there's this group. You know, it's like this group has three hairs in it that are stuck together. Group number two has two hairs that are slightly open. Group three has two hairs slightly open. Look at these three as a group, group number four. And number five, I guess, would be this last three, right? And not easy, right? Not, I, I got to tell you, when you're looking at these things moving and then it gets really confusing to see which line is part of which group or was it in the other group, so easy to like mess up when you're trying to make all of this work, you know? Let's see, Regis says, I'm a SCAD student and my professor Troy worked on Lion King. I wonder if I know him. Oh, I did know it, Troy. Yeah, type in his last name if you, if you know it, Regis. I'm kind of curious to see if it's somebody I know or not. I worked on the Florida um, branch, so I was part of Disney trying to really expand uh, the Florida studio. Uh, and then there was obviously LA, right? Because I, I went to school in New York, so they kind of split, I think, the schools by the Mississippi, I think is what they used to tell us. Um, so anyway, like I said, here's some drawings that I did um, in the film. Uh, so let's get into how to do this, right? Our goal here today is like, we're drawing all these lines. How do you find the right line, right? There's kind of an averaging that has to happen for you to discover like, what is the final solution here? Uh, Gustav, and I've heard of his name before Regis, but I did not, yeah, I didn't work with him. He probably was, he was probably an LA guy would be my guess. Um, so, uh, you know, you're trying to find that right line, right? And I think that's, that's one of the challenges. 
one of my jobs not that long ago, I had an amazing uh, creative director who was my boss and he would, I liked, I liked, I like thinking, I like problem solving. I like sketching. I'm not one to clean up still to this day, all the way back from Lion King till now, I'm not one to sit there and try to sort of beautify my line and clean it up. Uh, and he kind of made this really interesting point that always stuck with me, what, which was, you know, when you finally put that clean line, you really are making sort of final like design decisions. And I do love design. So that kind of stuck with me. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. That, that gives me a, a reason to say, yeah, I should clean this up because you're, you're making, you're making final calls, you know, and I think there's something empowering about that. The trick is, again, I, I keep prefacing this whole thing with this is I don't think you should do that early. You know, I think the mistake that most students make is they think they have to come in clean. You see artists work online and on Instagram and YouTube where they're drawing really clean. That was years of practice to get to that clean. Okay. They already know how to draw. Right. I keep seeing um, Kim Young Ji like online, you know, drawing. He's doing like these perspective drawings and there's like no under drawing. You know, he's just like drawing out of his head. That's not how it starts. Right. So, you know, keep in mind, you got to put in the time and the effort and the work to be able to do it that well. I always think of Olympians, right? You see an Olympian do something and they do the floor exercise or they swim in X amount of seconds. And that took years of training, you know, years and years of training to get that good, to be able to execute so well and so smoothly, right? So, you know, be aware of all the effort that goes into making it look easy because it's not, it takes practice, right? So we want to find the right line. Well, guess what? Um, if we break down lines, and I'm being generous here, by the way, uh, we could say there's four line types, right? Line number one um, is a curve in one direction. Line number two is a curve in the other direction, which we could argue is really just the same curve. I've just flipped it, right? So really it's almost like one line. There's the straight line, right? So you have a curved line, you have a straight line. And then number four, which is an S curve, which is what? Well, that's really just two lines. Right, we got line number one and line number two, which is really just two of one of these. Okay, so if you think about it, to be even simpler, really everything you're doing is a curved line or a straight line, right? And that's it. So not much to, not much to think about, right? Now, sure, we, you know, if what would be going on in my head right now if I was in the audience was like, yeah, but there's like a hundred different versions of the curved line, and that's true, right? And that's part of your job. And we're going to talk about that is what is the curve, the right curved line? How is that built? How do I get to that line? But really you have straight lines versus curved lines, right? And be aware that the S curve, which is right here, again, is two curved lines, almost like toy railroad tracks, you know, connected to one another to create that S, right? Let's see, Mark says, hey, Mike, how do you make decisions around line weight? Ah, that's a good one. Let me see if we have time for that, Mark. If we don't, um, we could talk about that in another video, but I think we have done a video on line weight in the past. Not that I am, you know, I have no issue on uh, returning to that, but that is a great question. Really quickly put, you know, you could see all the lines that I usually teach are thin to thick to thin because they're lines of force and motion. And by the way, that kind of line innately already has force in it, you know, and why is that? Because it takes, it takes my force, my physical force in order to create that line, which already makes things seem like they're moving, right? Um, obviously there's gravity and weight, you know, thickness of line can add weight. Thickness of line can prioritize what's in front and what's in back. There's a lot of different uses for the thickness of the line to, to Mark's question, right? Line is a pretty in-depth language, I have to say, you know? Okay, so let's see. Um, so hopefully this makes sense, right? It doesn't seem like there's any questions around this. So you got curved lines, you got straight lines, and basically a double curved line, which gives you the S curve, right? I want you to be aware that this is actually how simple this part of it is. The challenge, of course, is knowing how to draw, right? Not just the lines, but how you use these lines in a language that actually makes sense, right? That describes things and creates space and force and mass and shape and anatomy and so on and so on, right? Okay. Seems like everyone's understanding so far. So the first trick I share with you is you want to understand that a line, a straight line or a curved line, it has two points, right? And be aware of that. And what do they represent? It represents the beginning, uh, the beginning of a moment, an idea, right? This is an idea. And it represents the end. 
right? There's a beginning and an end, beginning and end, beginning and an end, over and over and over again. Every stroke that you put down has a beginning and an end, right? That's why I'm not a fan, or I call it like the hairy line of students who draw the model kind of scared, right? And do like lots of little sketches like this, right? Because to me, those are beginnings and ends. And really what you want to try to do is you want to get your ideas to be as long, as long as possible. And you can go too long, by the way. It is possible to go too long where it doesn't really make sense with the length that you're going. But as long as possible per an idea. And we'll talk about that more, but ideas can be really short or they can be really long, right? Sometimes the idea is long because we're looking for like one long SC kind of line that's supposed to dictate the rhythm of the figure. Sometimes I just want like, uh, I don't know, the top of somebody's nose. It's like, here's the, maybe they're like a hawk nose, right? And I want to get from here to here. And then I want to go down the front of the nose and I want to go at the top and then the bottom and in and then go, here's their nostril and there's a nose. And I made it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ideas, right? Each line is representing a different moment in the structure of the nose. So sometimes they're really small and sometimes it's like, wow, look at the force of this body all the way down to the leg. It's like I went from the spine at the neck and I got myself all the way down to the foot, right? So here it's fluid and connected. It's got, it's S-ing like all over the place, right? So it's actually numerous S-curves coming together, linked up to create something this long. So you go from, you know, from long to short, again, based on the idea, right? What is the idea that I'm after? What am I trying to say with this line? I could have changed this nose, by the way, and said, I don't think that there's two ideas here. Maybe I want this as one. And I just draw it like that. See, now I combine the two ideas, right? So now it's, it's one idea. And that's where the fun to me starts to happen. You know, that's where your individuality as an artist starts to come out. Some artists chop things down into smaller pieces. Some people keep the ideas really big and smooth. I would even dare to say, in a sense, smallish lines typically lend themselves more towards realism, the longer the lines could end up pushing more towards like cartooning, right? Also thinner lines typically lend towards realism and thicker lines end up leading towards cartooning as well, right? You think of, I'm trying to think of two inkers. I mean, you could take like Bruce Tim as pretty thick, powerful, like thick to thin lines. stuff is very cartoony, but full of action and power. You know, you take someone like Frazetta, who's sculpting with these much thinner, smaller lines, and the illustrations push themselves more towards realism, right? Okay, so we got two points. This is a great exercise, okay? This is a great exercise for yourself. You know, it's like, okay, I've got two points, you know? I'm going to, uh, and you can put a bunch on a sheet of paper on the screen. Maybe I'm doing this, right? And just practice, you know, right? So it's like, and by the way, when you do this, one of the secrets to drawing with force is you don't start at the point. I'm not gonna put my cursor on the point and go boop like that and try to get to the other point, you see? What you wanna do is you wanna start before the point and you wanna end after the point, right? Because we're drawing with force. So we want this line to extend before and after. So I, I wanna come in moving, and I talk about this like an airplane. I wanna come in and land. This is the landing strip over here, right? So here's like this trek of landing strip, LS we'll call it, right? Landing strip. So I wanna come in landing and then take off again. So I wanna do this, you see? So now the line comes in with that taper, it hits the ground, right? And then I'm like, ah, I wanna get back up in the sky, right? And then I finally get up, you know, off the ground again and up into the sky. Very, 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 very important, right? It's one of the biggest secrets to force drawing is the line. And that's why if you look at the beginning of any of my force books, I start with, hey, here's the force line. There's a reason that that's there. It's a reason that's at the front of every darn book. Because without this, it's not going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen is because I need to physically, again, draw forcefully with a sense of movement to create a line that creates movement, you see? Now, I was just thinking in my head, can I troubleshoot that? I could. I could I could be an artist that draws forceful shapes, meaning straight to curve shape design, with line that has no thick to thin. So what will happen there is the shape will provoke movement, but the line will not, right? And there are artists out there that, that do that, that I like, whose artwork I like, right? So they have line that is, like I said, mono thickness, right? Does not get thick or thin but the shape design is good enough to actually still feel like that figure is moving. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't know if when they draw, they experience force the way I'm, you know, trying to teach you and Rotunja and Swami are trying to teach you because we're drawing with this physicality of this line, right? So it's almost like we're being athletic all week long, you know, in the art of drawing, right? That's why we're all so thin, see, because we're always like exercising, <laughs> right? We don't need to go to a gym. We just use force drawing, right? To stay, to stay thin. So, you know, this is a good practice. Yeah. Can I add something in there? Um, yeah. Th this is one of the thing, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I have to be honest here. I don't, I'm not a big fan of like clean up, you know, but one of the thing that it taught me, like uh, me and Mike were talking about this, like uh, when we were planning for this Friday is like, and I, and I think about it, it's like, when you do clean up, you become so specific, you know, even when you're doing rough drawings, you basically learn A to B, A to B, you know, so even when you're drawing rough, actually that brings out more clarity, okay? So when you're doing rough drawings, you have this habit of doing A to B, A to B, that brings out clarity, okay? So you have a rough drawing, but it brings out clarity. And just like Oli Johnson was said, mm -hmm. you will have to draw clear, not clean, okay? So right. clarity uh, from this A to B exercise, and then uh, you don't have to worry about always like clean up, cleaning up the drawing if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, to, to kind of reframe what you're saying, um, by, you know, any kind of exercise you're going to do is going to affect you in some way, right? So the exercise here is to be able to create a clean line. And by creating clear line and going through the practice of this as well, when you draw with your rougher line, you'll be more clear, not clean, but clear, like Murtunjay was saying, right? Like, that's what they mean in animation about draw draw clear, not clean, but doing clean helps you be more decisive, right? Way more decisive. And like you said, you know, it gives you that A to B, you, your head starts to think more in that way, you know? So even when we're drawing roughly, I don't really have to be that rough, quite frankly, right? It's usually we're showing it to you to inspire you to be really rough, but at this point, we don't even have to really be that rough, you know? Thank you, Matunja. Yeah, excellent, excellent point. Um, so, I want to, to, to get back to this, you know, this is a great exercise, right? It's like just practice trying to get from one place to another, right? I could do it with different curves, right? I could do it with straight lines and say, I'm going to do this. But the practice is to be able to do this, you know, just to be able to do this, right? A to B, A to B, A to B. Do it with different curves, right? Different angles, different strengths of curve, different sizes of curves, right? Really tight apexes, really open, right? But practice getting from like one location to another, and get out of yourself this idea of, you know, get A to B's down, right? Again, sounds really, you know, simple, um, but a lot of students have a tough time with this first step. And when students come to us in mentorship and they already have this piece down, boom, we are off to the races. So much easier to teach that kind of student, so much faster to teach that kind of student just because the line is there. And for the line to be there means they are physically able to act on it. And it also means that mentally they are already in a certain state of how much they're understanding. Okay. So line is really, really important, really crucial. Okay. Now, if we add another step to this, you could say there's three points, A, B, C, not just A to B, but A, B, C. Okay. Now I don't draw with this tool, but I like this tool to show this point. Here's the pen tool in Photoshop, right? So here I go from here to here to here, right? This curve is actually made out of two straight lines. You can see I have an angle here at B, right? This very obtuse angle, right? I could have done, I could have made it acute, right? But this one's really wide. It's very open or obtuse. And, you know, where I put that really dictates what kind of curvature it is, right? It's like, am I going to put this middle point, point B all the way here closer to A? Am I going to put it to C? Am I going to put it in the middle? And I'm going to make this curve very weak, Am I going to make the curve really strong, right? Which would mean there's more applied force. So there's a, a sense of geometry behind this, you know? And I, I'm not saying I want you to pull out like your protractors and triangles, but I want you to be aware of, like, I'm aware of this. I'm aware of what the angle or apex is of a curved line as, as I do it, you know, to make sure the stroke's what I want, right? So, you know, if I take this now and I do this to it, right, and I open it up, Right, you can see it's like, okay, here's the curve, or do I want it to be a really subtle curve? Do I want it to be a really strong curve? Again, do I want to lean it left? Do I want to lean it right? But there is this point, right? So now there's a middle point, very different than just A to B, right? So if I were to draw it, 
Let me get rid of those points, right? And I do this, you know, am I, am I doing something like this? Am I doing something like this? Or am I doing something like this? Am I doing something like this? You know, like this, right? So a lot of variety. That's where going back to the four lines, this is where, you know, you start splitting hairs. There's the subtlety of where is the curve? What is my A to, A to B to C, right? Sometimes you can even say, you know, I want A, B to C, but it's a kind of a really tough moment to draw. You might have, end up going from A to B, and then you're going to go from B to C, and then you might actually massage B and say, you know what, I want to try to get this like glue together, right? A little harder, as you can see, even here, I'm not being super neat about it to get clean, but I've seen people do that as well. And we're going to talk more about that as, as I go through this conversation. I just want you to be aware, A to B force line, come in moving, leave moving, be aware there's an apex, right? That gives you a B point, a, a, a second point, you know, a third point, I should say it at the three, right? And how you're trying to get from place to place to place, okay? So when I'm teaching this, um, one of the artists I think that I go to, I've been going to for 25 years now, if not longer, in teaching students about A to B and A to B to C, is J.C. Leindecker. I think he was ahead of his time. He was a contemporary, you know, a contemporary, uh, of, of, not a contemporary, but a very forward thinking artist for his time period when he had people like Dean Cornwell and J.C. Line, no, not J.C. Leindecker, um, Rockwell around him, right? Guys that were more in sort of a semi-realist place. Cornwell did actually start pushing more into design also. He's actually good to look at as well. There's a lot of great, um, drawings of his. Uh, he did a mural, I think it was the LA library, if I'm not mistaken, you can find some of that stuff online. Also pretty good designer. My point though, is that this wasn't that common, you know, he really started to like modernize uh, illustration, you know, uh, Leindecker did. Uh, and anyway, he's great to look at for these lines, right? So I did an overlay here. I'm going to knock back the painting. Oops, wrong one. Uh, and I'm gonna show you, you know, like what's hidden in here, right? So here's my line drawing of his painting, right? And every one of these moments is a clear decision in A to B, right? You can almost look at it like this. If we forget about it, even a, a woman's face, you know, and go in here and think, I want this, you know, I want this curve. That's a curve at the nose there. This is a straight. I want this curve, this convex. Convex is pushing out. Here's another convex, right? So look at the lines. So I'm overlapping them now. So you could see like their character. The longer you create a line, the more obvious its character is, you know, because if something's small, you can't tell like, oh, is that really curving or not? But if I do this, you're like, oh, I could see the curve, right? So it's like, oh, the lip is like this. The lip is like this. This is going in. This is going out. This is going out. This is actually an S. This goes like this and then goes like this, right? So look at those overlaps. This is an S. This goes out and then goes in. And again, when I say out, I mean, it's pushing out or is it pushing into the shape of the form that we're describing, right? So you start looking about how I went around the hair here, right? It's like, Convex, convex, concave, concave, straight, concave, convex, convex, right? Convex, convex, um, concave, 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 convex, right? This is really clear A to B thinking. And the extension, like I said, of the line even further presents how that actually works, right? Counterpasses. Cornwell is one of my absolute faves. Uh, I would agree 100%. I used to have some of his paintings, uh, Xeroxes them up at, when I worked at Disney to inspire me. Uh, let's see, Yegi Art says, using that pen tool is visually helpful. Okay, great. So um, again, you know, you want A to B or you're getting the S curve or sometimes A, B. Every one of these really has an A, B, C in it, but you know, the smaller it is that A, B, C is less evident, right? So I do recommend for everyone to look at line decker. I think it's really great to hyperextend the lines, you know, to go further than what it is, to recognize the clarity of its design and how one line overlaps another line to create shapes. I think that's actually pretty cool. Uh, let's see, Akram says, I really appreciate your way of teaching and all your books. Thank you. Thank you, Akram. I appreciate that. Um, so hopefully this makes sense, right? 
look, you know, there's other artists out there. J. Scott Campbell, which I'm sure most of you know, he created Danger Girl. I used to buy his comic all the time in the early 90s. Um, he does this also, right? If you see artists who are really clear in design, I can almost guarantee they've probably looked at Line Decker at some point. Line Decker is really the, the god of this, right? Of this thinking and this clarity of this A to B thought, right? Okay, let's keep moving. So that gives us our A to B, our A to B, our A to B. There's a last piece. So that's all like piece number one. There's one second portion I want you to be aware of. And I talked about it a little bit and that is the corners, right? So we have all these A to B lines, right? If we look at what I did here, this is really what I'm trying to say because these look the same and they kind of are the same. Um, it's just that, you know, this was like, let's say a line decker example. Line decker. And what I want you to see here is this is a sharp corner. And this one is rounded. And rounded could get more rounds, right? I can come in here and say, well, now I'm going to do this. So you'll see now I've graduated it over this way, right? So if you now keep in mind that you have A to B, you have A to B to C, and you have corners, which is where each one of these lines meet, then that's everything. Now you're basically in control over the style, the line style of your illustration. Now I've, I've art directed in video games for, for decades. And when I would start on a project as the AD and I'm figuring out what the rules are going to be, guess what? I started with line because line creates shape, right? And shape, you know, and form come together, right? To start creating the objects or characters and so on that um, would go into the game. It didn't matter if it was a lamp, you know, if it was a prop or if it was an environment or a character, this stuff matters, right? So, you know, it's like, is the design style of this show or video game gonna be very sharp cornered, right? Or is it gonna be very rounded? When you are direct, you learn, of course, that, you know, sharper corners are more dangerous, right? Rounded corners are more uh, safe, more playful. When I think of Disney, I could tell you, you know, if we go over here, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is, uh, is Lilo and Stitch, right? Like Chris Sanders draws with very rounded curved lines. If I wanna think about pointier stuff, well, I'd probably think of like Sleeping Beauty, right? I'm just gonna write Sleep B here. Um, I would think of 101 Dalmatians, right? And sometimes in a film or an animated, an animated film or a live action film, you'll have both of these things, right? And it'll say like, this area is dangerous and this area is not so dangerous, right? Uh, you know, this character is dangerous, this character is not so dangerous, right? Just basic, basically, you know, focused on the kinds of lines you use and the cornering that you're using, right? So if you put these two together, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm gonna, I have this, I have this line and now I have this line. I created a sharp corner. Do I want that sharp corner? Maybe there's some way of me connecting these or do I round this out, right? So I have this sharp corner. Am I gonna put a line in here that goes like this from one into the other? You see what I mean? So now all of a sudden this has become this, but recognize that this was built out of one line and a second line, right? So like I said, what's exciting to me about this sense of cleanup is you are really dictating now the design quality of your work, right? I'm not gonna go into so much, you know, you could draw with like thicker lines or thinner lines, right? And we talked about that a little bit earlier. Today, I just want you to be aware of how do you clean up? And the way you clean up is you really gotta understand where your beginnings and ends are. Where are your A's and B's? Where are your A, B's and C's? And what do your corners look like? I'm gonna close one last thing before Matunjay starts drawing. I'm yeah, drawing here for us and that is, when I started learning this was kind of like the mid nineties, like 96, 97. And I was teaching drawing at the School of Visual Arts. And I was, uh, I was starting to figure out force. You know, I, I remember students, I was teaching them this and you know, we would draw like a shoulder like this as an example, right? Now it's got the sharp corner in it, right? So let's say the person's head is like over here, right? There's a sharp corner. Um, I'd be like, oh, you know, I like the feel of this. The sharp, sharp corners, by the way, actually give you more structure, right? Because you got the sharp corner. I could feel the box. You see, I could like put a box in here with no problem. So, you know, structure you get 
you get more structure out of sharp corners, you get more fluidity out of the rounded stuff, and you also get more applied force, right? And that's, a, that's the problem here. The problem with the shoulder right now is I get the structure out of it, but I almost think of it like a dam, right? Imagine I had uh, a lot of water sitting in here, right? And we're, we're looking downward at a dam, right? So here's all this water. And this dam is put together like this with this seam here, right, at this corner. If there's enough water here, I guarantee you this dam is going to break. And where is it going to break? It's going to break right there, right? So not that great. So I have to pick and choose like when I have these sharper corners and when I don't, right? Like in the nose and the brow and the face and stuff, I think it works better. So on these shoulders, I'd say, you know, just be careful when you use this. Maybe the shoulder is better suited to have a little bit more of a curve in it like that, right? Because now that feels like a sealed off dam to me. You see, when I look at that curve, I'm like, oh, I can't break out of that. The integrity of it because um, the curve is there and the applied uh, force is, uh, is stronger, right? Like there, it, it's pushing out on this curve. It feels, it just feels more right to me, right? I just don't, I don't buy it here. Now, does that mean you should never do it? No, I mean, I do this even sometimes. I like the style of it. If I wanna make something more angular, more structural, more designy, sure, I'll put in those sharper angles. But I'm aware of this. I'm aware of this issue. You know, I'm aware that the curved line shows more force, it shows more applied force than two straighter lines coming together to a sharp point, right? So again, you know, these are all then in the end style choices or personal decisions on how you apply force. Where do you add more structure? Typically you're gonna add those sharper corner moments in like the face, the hands, the feet, the knees. So all the hard places like joints and the skull, of course, right, the face and skull. That's where you'll get a lot more of the sharper cornering like I did over here. Um, and then in the body and the softer areas like muscle, like, you know, the thighs, the bicep, right? That's where you're gonna have these like rounder, thicker curves. Somebody maybe that's really skinny, maybe does have a more angular shoulder and someone who's muscular or thicker um, might have a more rounded shoulder, right? So be aware of that, okay? All right, if you have any questions, of course, you know, feel free to type them into the uh, chat. I hope that my uh, lecture here made sense. I'm gonna pass it on to Murtunje to close us off today with the time we have left and show us his, um, you know, his drawing ability and how to go from really rough to clean, okay? All right, let me see. I'm not sure if I gave you control yet. Let's do that first, just in case. All right, all yours. All right, guys, let's see everything in action now. So, uh, thanks, thank you, Mike, for the great insights. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's really like, you know, you're kind of art directing everything, you know, from the line to, uh, to the pixels, you know, and it's so great to know. All right, so what I'm going to do is like uh, do a rough drawing of it so you see, like, uh, like my decisions in action as well. Okay, so it's like, Okay, uh, what I learned from cleanup, cleanup, I, I learned uh, how to be, how to bring clarity to my even rough drawings, okay. And I think that's my secret. I, I don't think I ever got the answer like before the stream, <laughs> you know, when you're planning it out. It's like, oh, my drawings are rough, but why they're so clean? That's what it is, right? So, let's see. Uh, it's my favorite part. <laughs> it's like, just like sitting and chilling and just like drawing. So again, you know, see like, I'm using a lot of lines, but very, very clear though. Okay. You see like here's the leading edge into your shoulder. That's something, something we can talk about that, uh, that water dam metaphor here. You know, it's like, oh, here's the leading edge. So I can just like bring in more strength in here so that the water doesn't like uh, go out of that. Okay. All right, let's see. It goes like this, you know. I'm just gonna create a very small negative space here, like this for the for the sake of the silhouette, like right there. Uh, and I'm at this stage, I'm I'm being like super, super like rough with it. Okay, so let's see. Just wanna come off from here, right there, right there's the division between the hands. Like this. There we go. Uh, I'm just like worrying about worrying about the function of the figure, trying to like bring up that energy. Okay, 
right there. Right there's a hand. It's very interesting, very cool hand, by the way. It's more like this. See, like the, the gropher yeah, it's muscle kind of like goes over there. And here we have the hand, okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rough the uh I'm gonna rough out those forces, forces in the fingers. There. Have this uh have this thumb comes out thumb coming out like this. And this one's doing that. Yeah, more like that. And let's see, we can can get some legs in there as well. Um, I'm worrying about the form. This is actually uh this stage, by the way, is uh this is what I want to like push students through at the beginning, like before doing all the cleanup things, just because this is what is missing, okay? Like uh many people are like doing cleanups and stuff, but they don't understand that. The cleanup stage is actually um, coming from from this, you know. First, you need to do this, and once you get the energy and everything, then you can actually uh, um, go there and try to clean it up. Because uh, we cannot actually we cannot lie with ourselves and uh, with the fundamentals. We can actually say that when you're cleaning up the drawing, it loses some of its energy, or I would say, to uh, like a little bit of its energy. You know, it really does. So if you're not being energetic, even even in the beginning, and you're starting from a stiffer, uh, like a space, like a zone, and it, and then you clean up, clean it up, you know, you actually end up with a very very stiff drawing because you, it already doesn't have a lot of energy, and then you clean it up, and then it lose all of its energy. <laughs> you know? So the more energy that you have uh, in the beginning, basically, you don't have to worry about if it loses some of it. Okay. All right, so we will try to uh, clean this one up, I think, just for the for the sake of time. I think I'm going to take some time uh, trying to like show you the all the things like A to B, cornering, okay, like what kind of line would you use? I think uh, someone asked in chat about the line weight as well. Okay, so we, we're going to talk about that as well. Okay, so there we go. You no, know, we had a, we had a cool drawing in here. As you can see, a lot of energy. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll try to uh, uh, Try to like keep uh, alive that energy, not try to like lose too much of it. And let's throw in a very rough base in here as well. So let's see, looking up. See his uh see his skull right there. And uh a nose, right? The brow ridge. Brow ridge is gonna be like the heart. I want to show you the contrast to you get the time. And Got a mustache, right there. Okay. So let's we have a have a rough one here. All right, uh, let's try to clean it up. So I'm just gonna turn down the opacity for this one. Not too little, not too dark either. Some somewhere in the middle, say something like twenty five percent. And so I'm not hard and partial, so I'm just like doing what uh, is feeling good to me right now. Okay. So uh, one of the tricks that I would share with you is I think is like very, very important because you need to like think about the line weight as well. It's not like um, you had like line like these all the time, okay? These are like boring lines. Well, I can clean it up in that sense as well. But again, all we are trying to do is still keep the energy alive. Okay, I'll try to uh, keep alive as much ener energy as we can. If you uh, take any brush, okay, and uh, you would basically angle it down. You see, like I have this brush on an angle like this. I don't have it something like uh, like a very horizontal horizontal brush. Otherwise, see, it's it's gonna work like that. Okay, but um, I'm gonna separate it that. If I had it on an angle, see, it kind of gives me that calligraphic um, brush stroke. Okay. So in that sense, it's, it becomes like much more easier for me to get those thick and thin line, okay? And uh, really showing off those like A to B um, line, okay? So this is gonna give you like much more control rather than this one, okay? It's the same brush, it's just that uh, on an angle like this, it would give, give you this line, okay? But and so you can actually look at the difference, the line that I have in here. And if I angle it down, 
than the line that I have in here. Okay. Uh, now I can actually very see the difference here. All right. Um, so once we have the settings figured out, now because uh, this is cleaned up, we don't want to have like um, like too much of opacity to it. As you can see, like my uh, settings are turned off for the opacity. I turned this one off. I keep this one uh, open again, like this one uh, on, just because if I don't have it, then it would work something like this. I definitely want to have the pressure sensitive uh, from. All right. So what I will do is like I'll try to zoom in a little bit because now I have no fear of actually losing my proportions and such because I have this like underdrawing to it. And I'm gonna keep this uh, a little bit here. Okay. So I have this. Uh, I have this as my guide. Now see. Right there is my leading edge, okay? For for Hall of Force guys, you know, you know what the leading edge is. So I would try to have a kind of a thicker line for this one. It's more like this. A little bit of more of a thicker line. Like this. You can see there are like some bumps and details. So I'll try to get, get that as well. Okay. So it's gonna work like that. Okay, I'm gonna start again for this one, just to um not do it. So I have something like this. I have a little bit more of a thicker line here. This uh this takes time, you know. <laughs> so I have something like this. I'm trying to like have a more of a thicker line, and I'm really like going like A to B, A to B. So here I really want to have something as a as a thicker, okay, like a thicker stroke. And I'm trying to design those lines. See, like my, my line is like uh, getting a little bit like this, becoming a little bit more more thicker. And as it's like coming down to the back, because that's where the force is, I'm kind of like designing these lines, okay? More thicker, more thicker, and then getting thinner again. Okay? So this kind of uh, designing. You know, you would really know the importance of, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, you know, like art directing, even these lines, you know, they are so important. That actually defines a lot of the style, you know, for your show or whatever, whatever you're doing. Okay. Now here I can be a little bit more thinner, and uh, as you can see right now, as I'm coming, I'm also like focusing on the bumps and the details, and this is now actually finally getting into how how uh, deeply you know your character. Okay. Now here's just uh, here he's a model, so knowing the character here does mean that uh, knowing the anatomy, okay? Like, oh, what are those bumps and details? Uh, I just want to like know about them. Um, all right, let's see. So here, as you can see in the rough drawing that I have a really just smooth curve like this and the elbow and just like, it's kind of continuing. But now I'll try to have like, uh, like the muscles. Here's a little bit of overlap in there. I will try to get the tricep in there as well. Again, designing like this is the uh, so here's A, here's here's C, here's B, right? I'm trying to have that that apex in there. Okay. So I know that that's the apex. Again, trying to design that a little bit, and then um, yeah, just like going off, you know, just like knowing the muscles and everything. The better you know your model, the better you'll be able to do that. Now here, see, that's the elbow, that's the hard part. So we can be a little bit like more sharper in there, uh, more like this. Then here we have the muscle, so I can be flowy and curvy. As you can see, as I'm going down in there, you see like that bone, how it's like poking out? That's the ona. Right. So I can be a little bit more sharper. Now I'll try to like, uh, yeah, mix and match up with that, with the line. All right, now we have this. I don't like the elbow. Uh, it's kind of boring. Let's try to do that again. So yeah, you can erase for sure, you know, because you're like designing like every part of it. And I think that's what uh, that's what Mike was mentioning. You know, you just need to be super careful about careful about what kind of lines you're using, and that's why uh, maybe one hour to clean up the drawing in the, in the production in Disney. <laughs> wasn't uh, enough, you know, for, anyway, so here's the bone, right? So this is kind of overlaps here a little bit. And again, always, you know, you need to always check it up 
with your uh, with your rough drawing hiding. So it's like, oh, it's like going good or not, you know, things like that. Oh, it should be up there. Okay. Um, so let's do it. Let's, uh, I'm just gonna increase the speed here a little bit, okay? The apps, I, I really want to have, want to have like these, or like some porn lines. I think you can you can give it give them you can give some porn lines in there as well. All right, here we have the center line coming down. It's more like this, more like that. Right. All right. Um, let's try to take that back a little bit. I'm just gonna clean this in for for you. You see, like I, I'm not like making too many changes to my drawing. Uh, I'm actually just uh, cleaning up the lines, as you can see. The clarity is all already into the pose, so that's why I don't have to like, oh, you know, is this muscle like this? Is this muscle like this? Is this muscle like this? I don't have to like spend my time in that just because even though my drawing is rough, it is very, very clear. I was already knowing about like where the muscle actually starts and where the muscle actually goes. Uh, you know, those kind of things. So here's the bicep. Here's the here's a muscle right there. Uh, hey Matunje, let's go about one more minute and then I have I want to close up with the, the list that I have of different yeah. methods of doing this. Yeah, sure. I do this game then pretty interested in oh you kind of gave me a pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> A Lion King pressure for you. Yeah, Lion King pressure. <laughs> Here we have the knuckles, by the way, so you can use some sharper lines. It's more like this, more like that. Um, again, you see like the knuckle, you see like how powerful that is. And then you can use some softer lines right there. That's just because it's like the DPI, uh, DPI thing that Mike is going to talk about. It's getting a little bit like more pixelated as you're like zooming in too much. Um, but yes, you want to really want to make sure that you're like, if you're zooming so much, if you're going to zoom so much about your, in your work, you have to like uh, choose a better like DPI. Knuckle. Thank you. Again, you know, I could have done better. It's just, uh, just about spending like more time, how much time you're spending. And last but not least, let's do this. This was tough getting tough. <laughs> uh, like that, okay. All right, right, awesome. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Martin J. Yeah, see that one. Um, all right, so yeah, uh, cool. Mike. And, and Thanks for joining, guys. It's interesting to see your stuff cleaned up because I know normally you don't work in that space. Not none of us really do that often, so really cool to see. Yeah. Um, so I, I just want to close up today. The reason I'm, I'm taking this over before the very end here is I have a list I put together with you, and I wanted to demo um, some of them before we leave. So as Mertenje was saying, uh, you know, in cleanup, especially in cleanup, you want to watch your DPI to brush size, right? So typically, first of all, you want to increase your DPI, um, you know, and for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it's like dots per inch. And, you know, if you go into like image size on Photoshop, you're going to go over here to resolution. You can see mine's very low right now, 72 DPI, right? So if I zoom in on this stuff, it's going to break up into pixels very quickly. Usually like 300 is pretty good. Or if you really want high res, some people even go up to 600 when doing something like cleanup, okay? So watch a DPI to the brush size because you could have, you know, um, you know, a brush, for instance, that might be done on a higher DPI and then you're in a lower DPI image and things get aliased. That's when you see all like the pixel chopping on the edge of a line, right? Anti-alias is when that stuff gets smoothed out. So you want to watch out for that. Um, get comfortable with the angle you are drawing at. What does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, when, when we draw, I'm a righty, right? And since I'm right-handed, um, 
you know, my, my hand is, let's say this shape right now. Okay. So here's my arm and my hand wants to draw curves like this because here's this joint and then my shoulder joint and my elbow joint. Right. So, so this kind of curve is very easy for me. Okay. This kind of curve is not right. All of a sudden I'm going the opposite direction of the arc of my anatomy. Right. So I have seen artists literally either on the Cintiq, I have an older Cintiq with the animator stand basically where I can spin it. I've seen artists take that and they basically keep spinning the surface they're drawing on to match up to that curved line that works naturally with their hands. I've seen people do that on a piece of paper, right? If you look at Gary Villarreal, right, which we did an interview with um, a couple of years back, he'll be usually drawing on like the small sheets of paper and he spins the paper, right? He's like turning the paper to make it work to what his hand's strength is, right? I'm not saying you have to do it. I just want you to be aware. That's another way of getting really good line, right? So that's what I mean by that. Nowadays, we're in Photoshop, right? Um, and most of the other painting software has this too, but there's a thing called smoothing. You can see I'm at 10% right now, right? I put it always at at least that 10% mark because drawing on Cintiq is not the same as drawing on paper. The texture doesn't have any grit in it. You know, it's totally smooth piece of glass. And paper, even though I draw on smooth paper, it still has a little bit of grip. So that 10% kind of brings it back to me and I feel a little bit more like I have the control that I do on paper, right? You can go really far with smoothing, by the way, right? Nowadays, I mean, it really takes almost a lot of the skill out of inking, but if I put this at 100%, you know, you can see that there's that little pink tail there that really allows me to control the line before I get there, right? So I can really indicate what I want it to be. So it's made inking a lot easier, admittedly. It's silly for me not to show it to you. It's there, people use it. Believe me, people use it, right? So there's no reason for you not to. So there's smoothing. Zoom in and out to design the line. Um, again, I know I have you know, friends who are professional comic book artists. I've seen them say, you know what? I have to get from, you know, I have to get from A to B, right? And they zoom all the way in. And they start doing this instead. You know, they they work the line. They say, well, I have to get here. I want it thicker in the middle, right? They're still drawing forcefully, right? But I actually like design the line, right? I could say, I want it thinner over here. And then I want it to get thicker right here. And they'll build the line up, you see? Still forcefully, right? But I'm actually like designing it. So the thick to thin you would naturally get by doing this, they actually build that line to get to that shape and design. Not my favorite way of doing it, I have to say. What I, the one piece I like about it, if anything, is usually people are actually zoomed in all the way. And I like the fact that I'm still drawing big and physically and with my shoulder. Not a big fan of the fact that I'm working these like little pieces to create a bigger line, right? We talk about line length per idea. This kind of starts breaking that up a little bit, right? Because if that's the ideal length and I'm starting to chop it down to design it, it's like, yeah, a little weird, but people do it, okay? Um, let's see, what else did I have here? Extend the align and erase back. This is a very common technique. So, you know, let's say, um, you know, I had, I had that corner thing that we were talking about before. So I do this and then I do this, right? And I want that corner. So you go past the corner and then you go like this and you erase your way back in, right? So it's like this. I keep going over it, but so it's like that. And then I go like this and I extend it like that, you see? And now that looks like a clean line with a really sharp corner, right? So I went past it and then came back in, right? Very, very common way to, uh, to ink. Practice your A to B and your ABC as we talked about today. And last but not least, there's always Command Z, right? Maybe not in the real world. If you're inking with a pen, of course, this one gets taken out of the mix, but you know, you might want to draw a, a, a certain kind of line and go, that's not the line I want. 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 Ah, that's the line I want, right? And, you know, your, your hand and brain coordination after doing it three times, five times, seven times will finally hit the kind of arc you want, right? So uh, in closing today, I leave you guys with these different tips. Um, as to how to get good inking line. I hope that this really helped, you know, all of you go from understanding force does start and being looser and rougher. I think that is the way to learn how to draw faster, by the way. 
Um, but at some point, you know, you want to clean up, right? You want to be able to create ink lines. You want to find your style, your illustration style. Maybe you want to paint, right? You want a clean edge for uh, painting your artwork. So here's diff six different ways I just gave you on doing that. Uh, thank you, Mertenje, today for um, so successfully demoing and showing us, like, you know, what that can look like. Uh, and then, like I said, that's really where you start to define yourself. All right. So, um, yeah, were you going to say something, Mertenje? No, <laughs> it's okay. been great. I learned something new today uh, very well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, we will see you next week again, right? With hopefully a, a topic that interests you where we can teach you um, more about the stuff that we think about when drawing with force. Uh, again, if you like what you saw today, please hit the um, subscribe button, uh, share with your friends, uh, your art friends out there um, about this channel and uh, hit that bell to get notified and we will see you in seven days. Take care. Take care, Martin J. Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Martin J.